Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. The colours we use as names for races of people based on their skin tone are by and large a gross exaggeration. Most white people aren't in reality a shade of pure white, and likewise the people we call black by and large are not literally black. Those are just two of the names we use to define people by their skin tone. Despite how silly they are, and how silly defining someone by their skin tone in general is, black nor white are not even the most ridiculous colour name we use as a name for a race of people. That colour has to go to yellow, and the way in which we use it to define a group of people. Though, who exactly are called yellow? Well I suppose the group of people most synonymous with the colour are the Chinese, specifically the Han Chinese ethnic group. But the term of yellow also extends outwards to people from Japan, Korea and East Asia in general. Yellow hasn't only been applied to people from these countries slash this part of the world however, someone who has ancestry from East Asia, but was born and raised in a different country in entirely can too be considered yellow. Yellow is a term for not just what people look like but where they come from and their ancestry. It's a hotly debated term, that's for sure. I am left wondering to myself however about the offensiveness of this term. Other colour based identifiers like black and white don't seem to be that offensive. Many black people self identify as black and likewise many white people happily call themselves white too. Yellow however isn't quite cut from the same cloth as these two terms it would seem. While researching this video I dug into forums and comments from people who claim to be of East Asian descent, though I can't verify these as they were little more than comments on a screen and people love to lie about themselves the internet would you know. Let's be optimistic however and presume that these people were genuinely from an East Asian background however. I found some people saying they are happy with the term and apply it to themselves and know others who use it. Though I also saw comments from people saying that they were disgusted by the term I would never use it, calling it racist. Unsurprisingly, like most things in life, people have different opinions on something. If you are watching this video and are from a background, which means the term of yellow could be applied to you, then please do let us know what you personally think of the term down in the comments. There's a little I love more than hearing directly from the people my videos are related to. Even if the majority of East Asian people watching this video say they are happy with the term, there are still going to be people who dislike it, which is completely valid. So I just want to say huge apologies to anyone this video may upset. I am trying my best with it to not step on any toes, but the amount of metaphorical toes this topic presents itself makes that kind of tricky. Just remember that I am just a dumb guy in England regurgitating information he found online for educational purposes. However, if I do upset any of you then that's completely fine, please let me know what I did said wrong down in the comments so I can take that feedback on board and better myself and these videos. Slight spoiler for the rest of this video however, the outcome of this isn't going to be me promoting the use of this term. Maybe by the end of the video you too will understand the negative connotation of this term and think twice about using it if you don't already. Also one person I think who definitely won't enjoy this video is YouTube themselves. I imagine there's a pretty high chance that this video will be demonetized. However I feel that this is an incredibly important subject to cover so I'm doing it regardless of YouTube's thoughts on the matter. If you want to help support content like this when YouTube doesn't want to, then please do consider supporting Name Explained on Patreon. One dollar a month really does help out in a huge way, and it only gets you ad-free videos and exclusive content like blog posts and podcasts, but it also helps with the creation of videos like this one that revolve around more controversial subjects. Patreon really allows me to tackle subjects like this, even when YouTube doesn't want me to. There'll be a link down below. Okay so I think that's all my bases covered on the warning front of this video. I guess the thing I find so strange about this term is just how far removed this colour is from the skin tone of the people it's being applied to. If you do a google image search of East Asian people, there is no dramatic hint of yellow in any of their skin tones. It's definitely a skin tone that's different to other parts of the world, but by no means yellow. How on earth did this colour get applied to the skin tone of these people? Well unsurprisingly this was not a term East Asians gave themselves. It was of course Europeans who were the first to call these people yellow. Europe and Chinese interaction can trace all the way back to the time of the Roman Empire and the Han Dynasty. Though modern contact between the two continents is thought to have started in the 16th century. What might come as a surprise however is that in the 16th century Europeans were not calling East Asians yellow. 
but white. One quote even says that East Asians are as white as we are. It seems there were multiple reasons as to why Europeans were calling the people of East Asia white. First off, because the skin tone of East Asian people is very similar to people found all across Europe. It seems that, that being labelled as white was more than just a skin tone thing, however. Being white in the eyes of white Europeans also meant being civilised like they were, and having culture and education like they did too. When Europeans came into contact with East Asians in the 16th century, they noticed that in these lands, a civilization and culture comparative to theirs had been established. Hence why Europeans felt confident with labeling these people as white. To quote Michael Kivak, a professor at the National Taiwan University and an expert in this subject, calling them white, in other words, was not based on simple perception either, and had less to do with pigmentation than their presumed levels of civilization, culture, literacy, and obedience, particularly if they should be Christianized. And Christianization is definitely a key factor in all of this. These first Europeans who made contact with East Asia in the 16th century wouldn't have been armies or merchants, but most likely they were missionaries with the sole desire to convert people they met to Christianity. The hope of these European missionaries would be that these East Asians who were already civilized like them would become Christians too, and in turn become quote unquote white. However, if you look into the popularity of certain religions in China, while it is growing, you will see that Christianity is by no means the dominant faith in the land. The Chinese in the 16th century were reluctant to convert to Christianity, instead sticking with their own folk religions and Buddhism. Once it became apparent that East Asia wasn't going to become a second Europe as these missionaries had hoped it would, Europe by and large started to distance itself from East Asia. Most noticeably for the sake of this video, they stopped referring to people from East Asia as white, as clearly these East Asians weren't as white as the Europeans had hoped they would be. This fact of no longer calling East Asians white is of interest on many levels. It's textbook segregation. We can use names and titles to differentiate people and this is a prime example of that happening. By no longer calling these people white, Europe was saying that they were not like them, they were different. And while different can be a good thing, it seems in this case it was meant to be a bad thing. It helped create an image in the minds of Europeans that the East Asians weren't these fellow white people, but instead strangers not like them in a foreign land. By the 17th century, East Asians were firmly no longer white. They had to be something however, a different colour started to be used to describe these people. That colour of course ended up being yellow. Instances of East Asian people being called yellow started to appear in the 17th and 18th century. However, by the 19th century it was far more commonplace. Though, why this colour exactly? It seems one of the first people to really cement this idea was Swedish botanist and physician Carl Linnaeus. Linnaeus is a pretty celebrated figure in the world of science. He created the framework for life that we still use today, such as creating concepts like species and genus, and he also created the system of no nomenclature for living things we still use to this day. In the realm of names, he's a pretty important deal, especially with animal names. We humans are of course animals too. This meant Linnaeus defined us too and broke humans into different types. In 1735, he divided the humans into four different types based on continents. The humans of East Asia, he defined as Homo asiaticus. Obviously humans from East Asia are actually no different to humans anywhere else on a biological level, so this concept and this term has become redundant over the years. Regardless, Linnaeus defined the colour of this group of humans as fuchsius, which can be defined as just dark. A few years later, in 1758, for some unknown reason, this colour was changed to lurigus, meaning sallow or pale yellow. It would be in 1795, however, that the colour yellow became truly entrenched with people from East Asia. This was thanks to German anthropologist Johann Friedrich Blumenbach. He is a figure we have talked about before, specifically in our Caucasian video. Like Linnaeus before him, he too was interested in defining humans as different races. He differed from Linnaeus however by separating types of humans on their appearance, rather than where they were from. He came up with five races of humans that graced our planet. He dubbed the people of East Asia as the Mongolian race, named after the nation of Mongolia in East Asia. Like Linnaeus, Blumenbach gave colours to his races of human too. He however was more direct in calling East Asian 
some people yellow. He said the colour of East Asians was yellow or the colour of boxwood, halfway between grains of wheat and cooked quinces, or the colour of sucked out and dried lemon peel. That last one in particular really isn't the most pleasant way to describe the skin of an entire group of humans, that's for sure. Blumenbach is an interesting figure from history. Despite his work and what he said about these races, he actually is considered one of the least racist thinkers of the Enlightenment. Though his work and research has been used to promote racism and entrench the idea that people from around the world are different and less developed than people from other parts of the world. I just need to stress that once again this really isn't the case. Despite the colour of our skin and where we live, we're all the same species of Homo sapien. Though nevertheless, the colour yellow became heavily linked with people of East Asia and people of East Asian descent. This colour, as well as other facts like unique eyes and unique birthmarks, also became linked with East Asians and were always used as a way to stoke fear into people and make them believe that these people were different to others. This fear of East Asians and how different they were seems to have come to a head in the late 19th century. This was with the birth of the so-called Yellow Peril. The Yellow Peril was a concept of European creation and was meant to warn the continent of the threat that East Asia had on their way of life and fundamentally stoke fear and racism into the minds of people all across the land. It's also from here where the really gross caricatures of people from East Asia come from. Interestingly, I read that the idea of the Yellow Peril actually related more to Japan at this time than China as we link it today. This is because it was around this time that Japan's own empire was growing, beating Russia and China in conflict in previous years. Japan were unhappy with being called yellow. This wasn't for obvious reasons, however. They felt like this colour didn't apply to them as they felt Japan was on par with European empires, unlike China, who they were happy to call yellow. This once again comes back to that initial idea that being white is more of a cultural thing slash way of life than just your skin tone. Something I also found of interest is that some people in China at the time were actually happy with being the yellow race. This is because yellow has been an important colour to China in its long history. From the Yellow Turban Revolt that helped end the Han Dynasty, the Yellow River that is so important to their nation, and the Yellow Emperor, the mythical figure thought to be the forefather to the modern Chinese people. The colour has been in their history for quite some time. This all brings us to now. Where does the term yellow stand now with East Asian people? Well, like I said at the start of this video, it seems to have something of a mixed response. By and large though, it seems that people are aware that this isn't a particularly nice term to use for someone from East Asia. One article I found however talked about the idea of East Asian people reclaiming the word, much like other groups of people have done with words initially created to segregate them from others. Let's wrap things up with another quote from the aforementioned Michael Kivak, whose writings have been instrumental in the creation of this video. Yellow was a fancy like all other racial groupings. It cannot be traced back before the end of the 18th century, and it had no basis in anything other than as an attempt to distance certain people of the world from the equally fantasized concept of whiteness. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at Name Explain YT. On Instagram, I'm also Name Explain YT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much.